Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IAS. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So in this video we will be talking about our current affair based MCQ series in which what we do we daily discuss 10 MCQs from your current affairs perspective. So today is 20 September uh, 2019 so let's see what are the questions for the day. First is leap scheme is launched by which ministry? So friends uh, this is an easy question uh, so uh, obviously answer is also uh, shown on, uh, uh, on, on your screen. So answer is human resource development. So it is a scheme basically leadership for academicians program. So it is a three week flagship program uh, uh, that uh, that basically aims at uh, training the uh, training uh, faculty. That is two weeks uh, domestic uh, training and one week foreign training for second level academic functionaries in public funded higher education institutions. So basically main objective is to prepare these second tier academic heads who are potentially likely to assume leadership roles in the future. So it is a kind of uh, preparing them uh, for, for taking greater role, leadership, uh, uh, preparing them for the leadership roles that they are likely to take up in future. <clears throat> so this training uh, uh, would, uh, would provide senior faculty that has high academic credentials, uh, the required leadership as well as managerial skills including skills of problem solving, handling stress, team building work, conflict management, development communication skills, understanding and cop coping with the complexity and challenges of higher education institution, institutions, financial and general administ administration. So uh, this uh, implementation will be through uh, 15 national uh, uh, NIRF top ranked Indian institutes that is national institu uh, institution ranking framework. So basically namely IIT Roorkee, IIT Kanpur, IIT Trichy. So there are multiple uh, 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 institutions and then next is uh, basically foreign universities uh, will be identified for the training. Um, and. Uh, they they were they will be basically that uh, those universities that uh, that uh, have uh, um, that have scored uh, uh, between uh, a top hundred uh, world global rankings. So this is basically the purpose of this uh, program. So basically train uh, second level um, uh, faculty uh, to take the leadership roles. Next is second. Consider the following statements related to polio disease. First, it is a contagious viral infection affects the nervous system of the children below the age of five years. Second, India is declared polio free by the World Health Organization. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. Let me tell you friends that both of these statements uh, are correct. So it is basically a viral infection. Please note it and it is contagious. It can spread, it, it, is, it is communicable and it affects the nervous system of the children. So it is transmitted by person to person through following uh, ways that is through fecal oral route or that is by use, uh, by eating contaminated uh, by taking contaminated water or food. So wire uh, basically primarily grows and multiplies in the intestine. So it's a host, uh, host site is intestine uh, from where it can attack the nervous system and will cause uh, polio and paralysis on an advanced level. So there are multiple types of uh, polio that is subclinical so uh, um, not much symptoms are experienced uh, uh, as this does not affect the central nervous system so 95% of the polio cases identified are uh, usually subclinic then then non paralytic uh, so this affects central nervous system but does not result in paralysis and then third is paralytic so this results in paralysis. So what is poliomyelitis? Uh, so it is nothing but scientific term or synonym, uh, synonym of the disease polio. So in very rare case it causes muscle weakness resulting in inability to uh, move or paralysis. So signs and uh, uh, symptoms are basically uh, headache, slight fever, sore and red throat, uh, general disc, uh, discomfort, vomiting. So then uh, uh, for uh, non-paralytic polio the symptoms are here and then for uh, uh, also then uh, people with para uh, paralytic polio experience the symptoms of non-paralytic uh, polio followed by these symptoms. So these are uh, more symptoms. Let's move on to the next question. Next is uh, consider the following statements related to Atlantic Meridi uh, Meridional uh, Overturning Circulation. First, the Atlantic Meridional uh, Overturning Circulation is a large system of ocean currents that carry warm water from the tropics northwest to in, into the uh, North Atlantic. Uh, second is warming up of Indian Ocean is said to be the reason for the recent weakening of this AMOC. 
so we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct so let me tell you friends that both of these statements are correct so answer is c so here are more details so since past 15 years uh, this atlantic meridional uh, overturning circulation has been weakening so <clears throat> Basically, uh, warming up of Indian Ocean is uh, said to be the key driver, driver behind it. So this is basically, it is a large system of ocean currents that carry warm water from the top tropics northwards into the North Atlantic. So please note it, it moves from your equator uh, region to your North Atlantic region. So Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, it uh, kind of helps in uh, carrying the heat uh, from uh, tropics to the, uh, to the polar areas. So this also helps in distribution of heat and energy around the earth as the warm water it carries releases heat into the atmosphere and in absorbing and storing atmospheric carbon. So uh, how, how is it weakening? So it is a large system of ocean currents like conveyor belt, like a conveyor belt driven by differences in temperature and salt content. So there are uh, due to differences in temperature as well as salt content, uh, this, uh, this uh, Atlantic meridional uh, ocean current moves and as warm water flows northwards it cools and some evaporation occurs which increases the amount of salt so low temperature and a high salt content make the water denser and this dense water sinks deep into the ocean so the more uh, detail you can read about it then move on let's move to the next question next is consider the following statements related to zone and council seen in news recently first it is a constitutional body established to strengthen the federalism uh, second northeastern council is a statutory body created under northeastern council Act 1972. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. So let me tell you friends only second statement is correct. First is not correct. So answer is B. So more explanation is there in, uh, in the book uh, that is Indian Polity by M. Lakshmi Khan. So you can refer to it. So let's move to the next question. Next is article 123 of the constitution empowers the president to issue ordinance. Second ordinance making power is coextensive with the power of the parliament. Uh, third under the ordinance making power president can amend the constitution under article 368. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. Clearly friends third statement is wrong but yes first and second uh, uh, statement is correct correct power is coextensive with the power of parliament but can only be exercised when parliament is not in session uh, or in or uh, uh, there is other some um, uh, a very important exigency that is facing the government and that's then is mark darshan or mark darshak scheme seen in news is re, uh, is implemented by a a i c t e b u g c c c b s e d none of the above so friends answer is a i c t e all india council of technical education so mark darshan under this institutions that uh, having that that have good accreditation record and uh, uh, do, uh, those who are highly performing are supposed to mentor relatively near 10 to 12 potential institutions so here uh, uh, further uh, we can say uh, guidance will be given to the uh, future institutions by the best uh, accredited institutions. So best practices in teacher, teaching learning process followed in mentor institute are diffused to mentee institutions. So the, uh, these institutions are also provided funding up to rupees 50 lakh only per institution over a period of three years in installments for carrying out various activities like trainings, workshops, conferences and tra travel. So Mark Dashak is basically uh, under this came mentor teachers or mark darshaks who are either serving or super uh, annuated but willing and motivated with good knowledge of accreditation and who can devote adequate time to make required visit to these institutions are identified. So selection uh, uh, criteria is also there. So you can read about it um, in more detail. Let's move on to the next question. Next is consider the following statements related to accessible India campaign. First, the campaign makes it compulsory for both private and public sector to provide accessible infrastructure in their institutions. Second, accessible India campaign is in line with the Article 9 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities to which India is a signatory since 2007. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. Let me tell you friends that first, uh, first statement is wrong, second is uh, correct. Uh, this Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities that is under Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment has developed this management information system for stakeholders of Accessible India campaign. So this portal will bring all, uh, all the nodal ministry states and UTs on a single platform for monitoring the progress being made against each target of uh, uh, this uh, uh, Accessible India campaign. So it is basically a campaign. It is national flagship campaign uh, by, run by Department of Empowerment of Persons. Uh, with disabilities under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment and it, make, it aims to make a barrier-free and conducive envi uh, environment for the young all over the country. 
so the campaign has the vision to build an inclusive society in which equal person uh, uh, opportunities are provided to all the persons for the growth and development of persons with disabilities so implementation uh, uh, will be done for creating universal accessibility for persons uh, so uh, it it has basically three verticals that is built environment transport and information and communication technology ecosystem so these are the targets so you can read the, about them in more detail by pausing the video let's move on to the next question next is consider the following statements related to international atomic energy agency first it is one among the one among the organs of the united nation and the second all the members of the united Na uh, nation general assembly constitute the members of the international atomic energy agency so which of the above statements is correct friends no, uh, none of these statements is correct so answer is d so 63rd conference uh, recently uh, it is going on in vienna uh, that is austria so uh, it was set up uh, as world's atom for peace organization in 1957 within the United Nations family and it reports to both the United Nations General Assembly and Security Council. So functions are basically uh, to uh, work with its member states uh, to promote the safe, secure and peaceful use of uh, uh, this uh, nuclear technologies and uh, other thing is that uh, it has a uh, general conference it has one vote one uh, per member. So this is all about for your eighth question friends. Uh, uh, so let's move on to the ninth, ninth question. Ninth question is uh, which of the uh, following statements is are correct. First Shola forest or tropical mountain forest found in the valley separated by rolling grasslands only in the higher elevations. Second they are found only in high altitude mountains of the strait of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Kerala. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. Let me tell you friends that both of these statements is correct. Answer is C that is both one and two so basically uh, expanding plantations of exotic species including tea in the nilgiris can wipe out shola vegetation according to a report filed by an expert committee formed by madras high court so you can read about this shola, uh, shola grassland more in more detail by pausing the video so let's move on to the next question the last question of the day the 10th question is uh, for, uh, in vitro fertilization is a form of assisted reproductive technology to help the uh, infertile couples second in india the legally acceptable age to go for this technology is not regulated that it is, that is it is self regulated by the experts so which of the above statements is correct so friends let me tell you only first statement is correct that is a so 74 year old woman from andhra pradesh was recently recorded as the oldest in the world to give birth to twins through in vitro fertilization so uh, then uh, but medical community has expressed expressed ethical and medical concerns over this conception so why there is a concern because average life expectancy of an indian woman is 70 and of a man is 69 and medical community has expressed concerns over future of children born to such an elderly couple so there are also then complications that can risk human life so concerns are also then pregnancy in old age process multiple risks like uh, hypertension diabetes convulsions bleeding and cardiac complications to name a few so warm man of, uh, of an older woman has to be prepared by injecting ho hormones for foetus to grow for nine months also a woman of that age cannot breastfeed so this is also a concern so how it is regulated so globally an estimated of 50 percent of the couples are infertile so there are assisted reproductive technologies bill 2010 states that the indian social context children are old age insurance in uh, in the in the context of indian social uh, uh, scenario so bill purpose it proposes the upper age limit at 45 for women and 50 for men to undergo the in vitro fertilization so as of now various centers rely on the ic indian council of medical research 2017 guidelines that recommend the same age limit so even for adoption the total age of the couple must not exceed 110 years so with increasing life expectancy doctors are in tax with the government to increase the in vitro fertilization age limit to 50 to 52 years so until then several uh, exp several experts self regulate some council senior citizens to drop the idea and others refuse them in vitro fertilization tr treatment so friends here is a mistake uh, the, the answer must be c that is both one and two because uh, this uh, is as of now it is uh, uh, it is not uh, uh, we can say uh, regulated so it is re self regulated by the expert so answer must be C so friends this is all about today's discussion about the uh, current affair MCQs so if you like the questions if you like the uh, video then do ensure that you like this video and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and lastly friends we also have a telegram channel on, on which what we do we keep on updating our various initiatives uh, that uh, that we are running on our channel and uh, that we have for the purpose of CSC uh, preparation so if in case you 
you are you want to remain in touch with us uh, with the with the, uh, with us then you you are most welcome to join this public telegram channel the link of which is shown on your screen and will also be provided in the description box so you can check this link and also you can visit our website that is www.achieveias.co.in so where we uh, keep on uploading various important articles that are important from your uh, uh, upsc point of view and also you can contact us at our mail id that is achieveias21 at the rate gmail.com or you can also contact us at our number that is 8 Nine six eight nine two zero seven two zero. So lastly friends if in case you are interested to get the PDFs of these MCQs you can contact us on these details or you can check the description box so there is a subscription link that is shown on in uh, in the in the description box so if in case you are interested to uh, subscribe then do ensure that you check the description box so certainly there is a minimum fee for uh, this initiative that is rupees 99 per month if you want to get the PDF so but that has been kept solely for the purpose of our motivation so that we people can remain motivated to help you people in a consistent way so if in case you are interested to join then do ensure that you mail or contact us or you can ch uh, you check the description box so this is all about friends today's video have a very nice day ahead thank you